Hello, and um, welcome to our workshop for the third sector on evidence and impact using the census data. My name's Patty Doran. Uh, I work for the UK Data Service at the University of Manchester. And with me is Dave Rawnsley, who also works for the UK Data Service, but he's based at GIST. So just to go over what we're covering today, I'm going to give a quick introduction about the workshop and what we're trying to achieve with delivering these workshops to the third sector. Uh, then Dave's going to give a presentation about aggregate data. Uh, that will be followed by a short quiz just to check your understanding of the information that Dave's been covering. And then we're going to, Dave's going to give a demonstration of using some of the tools that we have at the UK Data Service. So we're going to have a look at Infuse um, and GeoConvert. And if we've got time, we'll also uh, do a little demonstration of DCAN, or we might leave that for the end around the questions and discussion. And then we've got an activity for you. Again, that's the handout. And you'll have 10 or 15 minutes to complete that activity. And then we'll come back together and have some feedback and see how you got on, answer some questions, um, and then hopefully evolve more into a discussion generally about using um, data to present uh, impact and for your services. So just as an introduction, the UK Data Service is a comprehensive resource that's funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. So it's a single point of access for a wide range of secondary social science data. So that includes census data, but also social survey data. But what we also have, which is uh, generally people are less aware of, is a whole range of support training and guidance tools. And um, that's what we're here to do today is to help uh, with some of the support and training side of things. So the objectives of this workshop is to help um, for us to promote our services specifically to the third sector users, increase understanding of how data can be used within a variety of settings. And we want to support people to access that data. And that might be through our tools or that might be uh, through other ways, which we'll discuss today. And the whole aim of that is to enable people to produce the evidence by enhancing their data knowledge and skills. So the rationale for this workshop was that we're aware that um, there's lots of third sector organisations out there who do, uh, who provide services that kind of fit with the, within the social science sort of field really. So it's lots of people work to improve outcomes for marginalised groups, you know, reduce inequalities, and out there providing services to those most in need. Um, and lots of these services run on short-term funding, and the funding relies on demonstrating the need and proving that the work that you're doing is creating impact and that the interventions that you um, deliver are uh, worth funding. And so how the UK Data Service can help is through all the evidence that can be produced from the data that we store. So the social survey and census data that we have and help provide context um, to the work that you're doing and demonstrate where the services are most needed. And so this is the first workshop of a series of three. So today we're using census data, but we're going to explore other forms of data over the next coming weeks as well. Um, and we know um, that third sector organisations um, can mean a whole lot of different things. We could be talking about really big charities. We could be talking about very small uh, local groups. Um, we could be talking about small groups that have a national remit. So we know that there's quite a lot of um, variation out there and that not all third sector organisations will have a dedicated research team and often it may fall on the people delivering the services to also produce the reports and demonstrate the impact and need. So we know it's quite complex and there's quite a lot of demands on people's time. Um, so we're trying to enable you with more awareness of the tools and how we can support you. So just to go back to the sort of data that we have, at the UK Data Service we kind of have three sorts of data. Um, aggregate data, which is what we're looking at today, so using the census data really to show um, what how aggregate, aggregate data can be used. And then we also have a lot of micro data, so that's data about individuals, and lots of that comes from the UK surveys. There is also a subset of census data, which is micro data, and we also have other sorts of data. So we do some international data sets, business data, and we also have qualitative data in our, um, 
repositories. So there's a lot of data out there that can support your services. And hopefully through the workshop today and the ones in the next weeks, you'll be able to sort of have a greater understanding of how our data can support you. So I'm going to pass over to Dave now, who's just going to give an a introduction to aggregate data. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I am David Rosley. Um, I work for um, GIST. Um, we used to be part of the University of Manchester, but because of the vagaries of, of uh, modern life, we, we are now ourselves part of the third sector. We are um, a not-for-profit uh, organisation supporting um, UK academia, um, FE, HE, research uh, and schools, and increasingly um, the third sector itself. I've been involved with the census since about 1995. Um, started at the university as a, uh, a placement student and, and, and stayed. So what do we mean about aggregate data? Um, well, the data about populations, groups, regions, um, countries, it can be time series, so it can be a series of, um, of data, um, or it can be a single point in time, sorts of things that we're looking at, um, population, census headcounts, the economy, so looking at trade, possibly bilateral flow of trade between countries, um, could be greenhouse gas emissions, we have um, a lot of um, data on um, CO2 emissions, uh, or it could be groups of people, employment rate for a country for instance. Here's some uh, aggregate data, this is, these are data from PISA, which is the, um, the um, international uh, uh, educational um, data set. So along the bottom we have um, different countries, and then we have a, a reading score then, when we have a score uh, dots for girls and diamonds for boys. Um, girls, as you can see here, um, outdoing boys in every single country. When we talk about uh, aggregate data, we're, we're usually looking at uh, data with a, a geographic unit. Um, so it could be um, a whole country, it could be a census ward, uh, it could be a postcode. And aggregate, aggregate data about people um, could be households, could be bedrooms, or it could have been averaged, totaled, or otherwise derived from individual level data, which uh, we find in survey or census returns. Um, and it's important to understand that um, each data has a universe or a population. So that might be a daytime population, or it could be a workplace population. Um, and that data is aggregated into a table, usually. There'll be a, um, a geographic element. I've got a better, I've got a better image than that. I've got, I've got some actual data I got out of um, from the census this morning. Um, so it will usually have a, um, a geographic element. These are local authorities in Northern Ireland, and they also have a unique identifier. Uh, that's because it's possible some places could have the same name. Um, so we have a um, we have a do we have no, we don't have anything unique there. Um, but uh, it's quite um, it's quite common that there, there are two there are more than one call ward called central. Uh, so we ha we add a unique identifier to that. Um, each variable will have a description. Here we have age three and over, and the main language used uh, being English. And that will also have a unique identifier as well. Uh, and that's so that you can um, cite this data. Uh, We've built a system at the census unit at um, UK Data Service, which, which largely removes the tables from the, from the search aspect of it. You don't need to know what data is in what table. But we, we do still present the data in tabular form. 
But what consensus data tell us? Um, it's it's the most complete source of information. Um, it's get, getting close to about 100% coverage. It's never quite there. Um, it's for a single point in time, uh, which was the last one was the 27th of March, 2011. After that day, even, even the day after, that data can, to some extent, be outdated. However, for that day, it's almost 100%. Uh, the next one will be March 2021. Um, uh, there's no exact date yet, although it will be in March. Uh, and it covers a wide range of demographic, socioeconomic characteristics. This is not an exhaustive list. Um, there are other census products that come out of the census as well. So we have geographic boundary data for creating maps, um, micro data, so um, samples of, of um, individual level data, um, flow data, so we look at um, how people are moving around within the country and also externally, and how they're getting to work as well, and derived data, so we have um, deprivation data and um, spatio-temporal data such as um, POP 24-7, which looks at um, populations at different times of the day. So how are they produced? Um, everyone gets a form, either um, a physical form or um, an online form. A lot of work goes into, into the, the forms beforehand. Um, it's, it's ongoing now. Um, asking what what questions do we want on that form um, and local government central government businesses uh, academic um, organizations such as ourselves um, all have a say in what questions we want putting on there and what we want as an output from those questions um, 2011, there was a new question added on civil partnerships, for instance. Um, local authorities um, might want questions on household conversation, accommodation types, so they can plan for services. Um, central government might want to know about ethnicity, employment, disability, so they can they can also um, put funds into the, the right departments. Business might want to understand about population movement, uh, travel to work areas, um, and from from those questions, uh, a series of tabular outputs are, are designed at different levels of disclosure. And that's quite important. The disclosure element. I'll, I will mention that later. Um, there's higher levels of information available for larger areas uh, and lower levels for smaller areas. Um, once the tables have been created, that's when they create the geographies, or certainly the, the, the output area building blocks for the geography. They, the output areas are altered if there's a significant change to population, uh, social homogeneity, and physical boundaries. Oh, and I'll cover that a little bit more later. Um, and then the higher level geographies are rebuilt uh, with the changed output areas. Once that's done, they add uh, disclosure control. So statistical disclosure control is, is where they blur the data, they restrict certain data, or they remove it if it's felt that it could in any way reveal the, um, uh, the identity of, a, of a, an individual. Um, and so far, that's never happened, and the the, the different um, census um, organisations are, are, are extremely um, heavy on on security and uh, statistical disclosure control because they want people to have 100% faith that nothing bad is going to come out from filling in a form. Um, there's also an anonymity that the 100 year rule. Um, no one is, is allowed to be um, disclosed for 100 years or for 100 years, and then um, and then the uh, the individual level data is released. Uh, and as I said, this has never been 
Greeks. So uh, a little word about census geography. Uh, it's not as bad as it used to be, I'm glad to say, uh, but it's still tricky. So the building block is the output area. That's the smallest area. Um, it's designed to, to have a similar population size throughout the, the, the nations. It's supposed to be socially homo homogenous, so the people within it are supposed to be, to some extent, similar. Um, and it's constrained by obvious boundaries such as roads and rivers. And, and then in 2011, apt areas were, were changed to so that they aligned with uh, local authority boundaries, which you would have thought would have happened before that, but it for some reason didn't. Um, in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, um, there's a minimum of 40 households and a 100 rec uh, residents in each apt area, although they, they attempt to get uh, 125 households. That's the, the recommended size. Uh, in Scotland, don't know why, maybe because it's a uh, lower population density, there's a minimum of, of 20 households and 50 people uh, with a target of average of about 50 households. And uh, apt areas, are, they, they attempt to keep them stable over time. Um, but obviously with, with changing populations, changing boundaries, uh, it's, it's not um, always possible. From the um, super output areas, so from the output areas, um, super output areas are built. And there are two types, lower layer and middle layer. In Scotland, they call them data zones and intermediate geographies. And, and in Northern Ireland, they just have lower super output areas. Um, and this probably means nothing to you because they're not real. They, we don't refer to them. We don't pay our council uh, tax to them. We don't live in a, um, a lower layer super output area. No one ever talks about them. Um, they tend not to have names, just numbers. Um, but it's a way of, of trying to create a geography that rarely changes over time. And so we can then uh, use those to, um, to compare with previous and future uh, censuses. Um, on top of those, we do have um, real geographies, so we have regions, counties, local authorities, wards, um, those will be um, council or electoral wards, and electoral divisions in, in Wales. Um, we don't have postcodes in the census. However, we have, um, we have an application called GeoConvert, which you can use to um, look up um, geographies and also uh, convert from one geography to another within certain caveats because um, obviously converting um, um, post goes up to um, uh, council district areas uh, can be tricky. I think this is my final slide. Um, so we've seen that aggregate data, data that's been derived from individual level data, which are, are, are pulled together, so large patterns and trends can be seen. And aggregate data are often about different groups of people uh, or regions collect for, collected for administrative purposes by um, census officers, central banks, national statist statistical officers, local and central government departments, uh, and they use them to identify how and where they should be um, using the, uh, the public. Um, here we've got just a little um, little slide to show you how the budget was spent um, in 2015, and it's it's census data that informs these decisions. And aggregate data is also used to um, to check how different uh, community, groups in the community are affected by these policies and by these changes in funding and hopefully to inform future policy changes. So I think we'll move on now to um, Dave's demonstration of how to access some of our um, census aggregate data. He's going to start with Infuse um, and move on from there. So Dave will do this for about the next sort of 20 minutes. And then we'll move on to an activity where you'll give it a try yourself. 
So, um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> Infuse is a, a web interface we built for the 2001 census data um, and then updated it for 2011. So I'm, I'm just going to go through and get some data out. Um, we were thinking about what, what could we use, uh, uh, sort of a relevant sort of um, uh, statistic we could find for something uh, in the news. And we will thought about um, households with single occupancy um, and households with um, old age people, um, obviously with um, sheltering in place. Um, this is, uh, it will, will be quite useful to see what sort of populations we have of people who, um, who are over 65 and, and um, on their own. So um, this is our front page to infuse, um, choose 2011 data. Got two loops into the data. Depending on which one, it will restrict the amount of, so if you choose geography, it will restrict the, um, the detail of topics. If you choose topics, it will, it will restrict the, the geography that you can get. Uh, so we're going to choose geography first. <coughs> And uh, we're going to look at um, Manchester. Uh, that's where I'm based in Manchester. I, uh, I understand the, uh, the ward names. Okay, so here we have um, all the geographies from the um, different nations in the UK. Um, we do have some um, UK level data. Um, all the all the uh, nations have their own census questionnaires and, they, and questions and they are all wanting slightly different things out of the census and as, as gone by they have um, moved further and further away from, from this idea of a UK census um, but there are still certain areas that, that are um, the same. So we're going to choose um, local authorities expand that and we'll get a list of all the local authorities in England. It's is rather a large list unfortunately so it just takes a little bit of time. Okay so here we have all the local authorities and we choose Manchester and we're just going to open that up and we're going to select all the wards. But all we have to do is just click that one. There are 32 wards within Manchester itself and we'll Add that. We'll get confirmation that that's been added. So Manchester, all wards and electoral divisions. I hope you can see this. Um, and then I will click on next. That will take us to the topics. Um, so we we start with our filters. It'll it'll narrow down these um, the topic selections that we have. We're going to choose household composition. It's just a very, very simple query we're going to do here. Um, oh, and just to say, Dave, sorry to interrupt, but if, if that is a bit small for you, there is a zoom icon at the top of your screen that you should be able to use to zoom in just to make that a bit clearer. Thanks, Dave. Okay. That's okay. Um, we're just going to choose the first. We just want household comp uh, composition on its own. We could choose it um, mixed with um, other topics as well. We'll just choose this one and then we get um, some information about what we've chosen. So it tells us exactly what it means by household composition. Oh, this is Northern Ireland only. I better go back this way. Uh, have I chosen that one? Household composition, oh, yes, it should be. Household composition and age. That's not exactly what I'm after. I'm just going to go with that. It says it's Northern Ireland, that, so I'm not, uh, not feeling very confident about this. The data we want is we'll check people who are age 0 to 64 and then people age 65 and over. And that's all we want. We've added that now. 
information in here. Uh, this is just confirmation of what we've selected. Selected areas and the combinations we've selected, and we'll get the data. Once once that's been the query has been run, the download data button will appear. We'll download that, and I'm hoping that this this is okay. And I'm going to open this. In our, it comes down as a zip file, and in there we get some metadata about the what we've selected. Um, I'll make that larger. Zoom to that, so it tells us that these are the unique identifiers for the variables. So these are the field names. These are the identifiers for the cells. The topic. Category and the description. We also have how you can cite the data if you're going to use this in any publications. And the data itself. Ah, excellent. Uh, excellent. Have the wards of Manchester. This tells you what level the wards are at and the geography type. Um, and here are our two counts. So this is persons in one person households that are 0 to 64 years of age, and these are people in single person households who are, so these are 65 and these are. These here are not 64. And we can just do a quick tabulation on these to get some sort of percentages. So we're going to just do a quick percentage. Divide it by Oh, I didn't take the I didn't take the whole comp the didn't take the whole um, population. So I'll divide it by that plus that. I'll times that by hundred. Hopefully that should give us something useful. Uh, it doesn't look useful at all. Let me just check on that. That's better. And I can just create that very quickly. And that gives us the percentage of uh, people who are over 65 living in these, living on their own in the, this ward. And if we, I can sort this smallest to largest. So, as you might expect, the city centre, uh, lots of young people living there, it's only 5%. Hume as well, there's an area of a uh, lot of students and average young people living. And down here, Boston, Burnage, High Blakely, you're approaching 40% of the people living there are over 65 and living on their own. Um, I will just very quickly show you GeoConvert, as I mentioned it earlier. GeoConvert is a tool to match postcodes and, and other geographies and convert data between them. Uh, very quickly, I can give you some information about some postcodes, for instance. Um, I'll choose, we, we only have the, the latest postcode lookup, unfortunately. What we can do here, we can add um, data about um, um, postcodes. Um, so we can, we can add some deprivation scores. Um, so if I add some English, these are the index of multiple deprivation, which is uh, derived from census data and other uh, administrative data. We can add some classifications as well. These are sort of little pen pictures of, of um, areas. Um, actually, I'll choose the subgroups because these are more detailed. We can um, add 
um, metadata about how urban or rural they are, um, postcode populations, so we can, these are derived from um, the number of um, address points that the Royal Mail delivers to. Um, and we can also add uh, some geographic data and also data about the postcode. So we can say when it, when the postcode was um, introduced or, or terminated, some postcodes go, um, go out of service. Uh, I could supply um, a list of postcodes if I want, use one list, so I could, I could just supply my own. We get some metadata about um, the postcode and about the match, and also we can get some the results. Um, I can just quickly show you here. Um, so, postcode in South Manchester. Um, oh, we didn't put the description in, of the. Oh, sorry, this is the description. This, my area is, is defined, a little picture of inner city ethnic mix. And here the deprivation score and the deprivation rank. Um, and we have more information about what those mean on the, on the website. And I will quickly show you DCAN as well. If you are after large quantities of census data, so if you do want whole tables, Um, we've loaded bulk data into something called DCAN. Um, uh, it, that's just the name of the software it uses. Um, so here we, we can look at the topics. So if you want to look at um, language, this is all the tables that use language. So we can have a look at page by language profile in Wales. And we can just grab all the data for, for instance, all local authorities, all that areas. Um, it's obviously, and it only covers Wales, obviously. Uh, we can preview the data. Doesn't tell us much. Oh, here we go. You see that? We can make those larger. If that's what you want, you can download that. And that will give you all that data for all uh, output areas in Wales. That will take some. Oh, no, it's downloaded, actually. Um, to show you, there you go. All the data you would ever need about the Welsh language. Okay, I think that covers everything I wanted to say. That's brilliant. Thanks, Dave. That's okay. um, it's really good to see the tools. Obviously, um, we're on the end of a phone. We're on the end of email, uh, social media. If you've got any questions, yeah, follow it up. Yeah, that's great. So um, next, we've, we've had some questions come through. So just as a reminder, there is a question box there. So I've tried to answer um, the questions that have come through, but we can also address those again um, at the end when we come to the discussion. So if I've just kind of given quick answers to those, but we can pick them up again at the end. But right now we're going to um, have a break, though it's not a break. Um, hopefully you'll all come back and talk to us at the end of it. Um, but we've got a handout, so hopefully you can see on the um, control panel, the GoToWebinar control panel, down um, down at the bottom on mine anyway, there's an it says handouts, and there's a PDF there that you should be able to click on. And it's some step-by-step -step instructions to download some data like Dave did um, from DCAN, uh, not from from Infuse. So I uh, would like you to go away just for 10 minutes, um, have a look at those instructions and um, follow the instructions and download the data. And there's an optional part at the end to open up the data set in Excel or something similar and uh, try and pull out the statistics that we're looking for. And we're really um, trying to highlight with this activity how useful the data can be to give context to a situation. So there's a hypothetical question there that you're in Birmingham and you want to know how many um, older people are living by themselves because you're concerned about the impact of social isolation with COVID-19. So um, we want to know how many people locally in Birmingham um, that might be affecting. 
So have a look and see if the handout. I've got just a question here. Let's see um, if people are having problems with accessing this. Um, uh, the website Dave just used, that was DKAN, D-K-A-N. Um, we'll talk more, I'll put the link in there in a bit, Fran. Um, oh, you've just done the, okay, all right. So what we're going to do is um, come back at, um, at five to three. So um, we'll stay here. So if you do have any questions, um, pop them in the question box and we'll answer them. But hopefully you can all work through that worksheet at your own pace. Um, and we're going to come back at year 2.55 um, and discuss that and see how you got on and then have a wider discussion about how you think you might be able to use some of this aggregate census data or perhaps other aggregate data to support the work that you're doing um, in the third sector. So that's what we're up to now. I've just got a slide um, that I might put up um, to share. That's what the worksheet should look like. Um, I'm hoping you can all see that um, and hopefully you've all got it and these are the instructions. It says 3 p.m. there but we're just running a couple of minutes ahead maybe so we're going to aim for 2.55 to start back. We're going to do some polls though so we'll put the polls up and um, see how we get on that way. This is the first question here so did you manage um, to download the data to get that far through the activity? That's great. I think everyone's answered that. Um, so most of you got through that far, so that's that's great. Um, sorry that not all of you made it that far, um, but the activity is there to follow up on later um, in your own time, and we can discuss that more um, in a bit as well, if you like. But we've just got a couple more questions. So for those of you that did download it, how many different variables or different pieces of information um, did you download? So we've got quite a split here. So, I mean, it, it kind of depends how you define your variables. I mean, you might have said two if you're talking about the geography and the um, category, or you might have said four if you were talking about, because we did um, the geography and then we did total households, we did single people households, and we did single people households over 65, so that were four different categories. But when you opened it up in um, Excel, I think maybe um, I can show you on my screen, um, hopefully. Um, those are the four categories there. But when you open it in Excel, you'd see you had eight, eight columns. So there were actually eight bits of data there. So it just depends how you interpret that. Those are some of the sort of uh, ID variables and the labels that Dave was sort of talking about before. So it doesn't just come with the, the information that you selected, but there's other information attached to that. So that's what we've got here. So if we do um, the next question, for those of the, you that did get it in Excel, so I realise not all of you would have done this, but how many one-person households, get that question, where the householder is 65 of, or over are there in Bartley Green? So Bartley Green being just one ward in Birmingham. Yep, so we've got most people saying 1,409, which is, is right, it's this, this number here. So that's the number of people in one person households who are over 65. Um, so that's great. Um, the number beside it, the 3,712, that's the number of one person households and 10,728 was the number of um, total households. So I think there's um, two more questions. So what percentage of households in Bartley Green is this? So this would have required you to do a bit of calculation. Um, so we'll see um, how many of you got that far. Um, this wasn't, you know, we do other training around sort of introduction to um, Excel and introduction to statistics and stuff. So I realise that this might not be the sort of thing that everyone does um, all the time. But uh, we've got quite a few people answering this, so that's great. And yeah, we've got most people there saying um, the 13.1%, which is right. You'll see that. You might see that on my screen if you hadn't done the calculation yourself. So um, that's down there, the 13.1%. Uh, 
Um, oh, and actually, I just realised you've got the last answer as well on the screen, probably as well, if you're looking carefully. <laughs> I think there's one more. You don't need to write too carefully. There's a big arrow pointing to it. <laughs> but we'll put the last question up anyway. What percentage of people aged 65 and over are living alone across all wards in Birmingham? And that was you know, the original question that we were trying to achieve. Um, and as I say, I've, I've put it up on the screen there so you can see that a lot of you are getting that anyway. Hopefully some of you found that for yourself. Um, so this is just a copy of the Excel data that I um, downloaded. And so first I just wanted to point out that I cleaned up this data slightly. So I changed some of the labels up here at the top of the columns so that they made a bit more sense or they're more concise and I could read them in the columns. So this was the total households, this was the one-person households, and this was the one-person households um, who were 65 or over. So I did that first. And then I went down the bottom and I did my totals. So I just summed up all those columns so I knew what, what the total across all of Birmingham was. And then I uh, calculated the percentage by um, taking the one-person household from the total households and copied the percentages down the side. And then I ordered the awards from lowest percentage to highest percentage, just so I could see um, the trend and see what was happening and see what the smallest percentage was compared to the highest percentage and then looking at the mean as well. So those were just the basic steps that I took to clean up that, um, that data.